I've tried a dozen fantastic productivity apps in the past year, but I only kept using three of them. Which are those and why do I use them? Well, let's find out. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Greg and I'm an online entrepreneur creating content that will help you become more productive and mindful. I wanna show you why hustling 24 seven won't bring success and happiness. So if you wanna find it out, then subscribe below and join our amazing community. Today I wanna to share with you my top three productivity apps that I recommend to every single person in 2021. I wanna tell you about the advantages, disadvantages of those apps, how I use them, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you one special secret trick for each of those apps. So if you're ready, let's just begin. The first app that I started using in 2020 is the Todoist. This is a free note-taking app that I've discovered on Google while browsing for the best note-taking apps in 2020. Um, and after I used it for a couple of minutes, basically, I fell in love with it because it's super simple to use. You can organize all different tasks. You can create different projects. Then you can, of course, highlight priorities. You can track progress and it's really an easy app to use. It's a free app, but you can also buy a premium version. One costs $3 and then for teams, for up to 50 people, it costs about $5 per user. Now I used to do this throughout the day whenever I have to create a note or um, create a task for later. And I just use it on my phone. I also use it on my uh, Mac and on my PC. Uh, but generally I try to avoid using it in the morning um, because, um, you know, I really try to get in my flow. I want to focus on my most important tasks of the day and then I, you know, try to put away to do it uh, because there are many tasks there and I really don't want to get disturbed by using it. Now, I used to do this only for private things, okay? I don't use it for business because for business I use a different app I'm going to tell you soon about, uh, but I only use it for private tasks. Um, I write down like, you know, different movies I want to watch, different stuff I have to uh, buy or I have to check on, um, for example, for groceries, I use it if I make some plans and that kind of stuff. Now, there are two things I don't like about to do this. First of all, I have my MacBook and also have my PC and the MacBook version, the desktop version seems much better uh, than the PC version. Now, why is that so? I don't know, but I just prefer the MacBook version. And the second thing is, if you only need a very simple app for creating tasks, then maybe Todoist is a bit too complicated for you. Well, it's, it's not really hard to use, but it has a lot of features which you can obviously use if you need it. But if you don't need those features, then, well, there may be other uh, free apps available that are even more uh, simpler to use. Now, the second app I really love using and I highly recommend is Asana. I use Asana for all my projects, for all my businesses, and I simply love it. I tried different project management tools before, including Trello, Rike, ClickUp, even Basecamp, for example, and some others, um, and I always got back to using Asana. Now, the cool thing about Asana is that it's free for up to 15 users. You can create different teams, you can create different projects within those teams, and you can obviously assign those tasks to different people. You can track all the progress. You can use different kind of grids. Um, you can use columns, you can use basic system for creating tasks. Like you can set it up, you can customize it the way you want to. And that's really cool about it. And also the learning curve is not that steep. I think it's pretty easy to, to, to use, but it takes some time to set it up. If you have like an online business, six, seven figure business, uh, you can probably use just a free version of Asana. It's more than good enough. But of course you can always upgrade it. And generally I use Asana in the morning. So after I finish with my morning routine, I uh, open Asana, check out my main tasks of the day, then I kind of schedule them, check the priorities, um, and then basically I close it and I start working on the tasks of the day. Now there are two disadvantages of using Asana. The first one is it does take some time to get used to it and you need to set it up, you need to create different teams and so on. Um, and this takes some time. It's not too complicated at all, but um, yeah, it does take some time you need to Keep this in mind and secondly you can only assign uh, tasks to one person so you can't assign one task to more than one person which is something i don't like because in some cases it's good to assign one particular task to two people but uh, yeah that's how it is it's not a perfect management tool but it's you know it's a really advanced one that i really love using by the way guys if you like this video please press the like button below now the third app that I really love using is Notion. I actually switched from Evernote to Notion 
uh, in 2020. Um, and actually I tried to do this twice. The first time I started using Notion, I didn't really like it. Um, it looked a bit too complicated for me and I really enjoyed using Evernote back then. But then I gave it another try. A friend of mine convinced me to give it another try and actually I fell in love with it. Um, Notion is basically a workspace. Um, you can create projects, you can share those projects with, with different team members. Uh, you can create tasks, obviously assign those tasks to the right uh, people. You can comment on different stuff, you can add in files, docs, you can connect Notion to different tools. It's basically a whole workspace in one um, advanced app. Now I use Notion for private and business actually. And for private stuff I use it for basically journaling, adding in all, all the know-how, if I watch an online course, when I create book summaries and that kind of stuff. This is kind of the main reason why I started using Notion. Secondly, I use it for investments to track what's happening. Um, I use it to, uh, for anything related to my health. Um, I use it for traveling. Well, I didn't use it that much in 2020, but I hope 2021 it's gonna be better. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, then I use it for different ideas, if you know, for quick tips and that kind of stuff. And I really love using it for personal stuff. It is much more convenient than Evernote, in my opinion. By the way, a cool thing is that Notion is free for one person. Uh, otherwise, it costs up to eight or ten dollars per, per user per month. Uh, but if you only use it for private stuff, um, yeah, you can just go with the free version. Now, I also use it for business. I have all data in about the branding, stories, about marketing plans are in, then you know, everything related to social media is in Notion, then all of my YouTube scripts are in Notion. I'm actually using a system from Ali Abdal. I copied from him. Thank you, Ali, once again for sharing this with us. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a great, great system um, that works really good for business and private stuff. And that's really powerful. Now I create two separate accounts. I have one for business and one for private uh, things. And I recommend you doing the same thing. Um, it's just much more convenient. And you can just quickly switch between uh, those two accounts. Now a couple of cons about using Notion. The first thing is it does take some time to set up. It's not that uh, simple to set it up, especially because there's so many features available. You can use templates, you can import templates from our people or Notion has some of its own templates. There's Some of them are pre-installed basically once you create a new account and that's a good thing. It does speed up the process, but yeah, it does take some time to learn all other features that are available and some connections are not that easy to understand. Um, so yeah, uh, you need to tweak it up a bit. Secondly, when I exported all notes from Evernote to Notion, all the images were lost. Uh, I don't know why this happened. I saw on the forums different people had the same problem. Um, so if you use different kind of tool for creating notes uh, right now and then you want to export those or import them into Notion, be careful about doing that um, and check if everything is working as it should. In the beginning of this video, I told you I'm going to share with you three top hacks that I recommend for each of those apps that I just mentioned. Now my first hack for Todoist, you can actually schedule when you're on vacation. I'm not sure if anyone used this feature in 2020, but I hope people will use it in 2021. And what does uh, this feature help you is you won't get um, reminders and stuff like this and also the karma score that is calculated uh, won't calculate those, those days when you're on vacation. Um, if you, you know, care about the score, if you care about productivity, well, it's a simple hack. You can just use it. You can just press one button basically and it's all done. So once you're back from vacation, you, um, you know, press this button again and this vacation mode is off. My favorite hack for Asana is the following. If you use a board view, so you have different columns like to do, uh, doing, done, for example, um, you can then create one special column for all important data. Uh, for example, for social media, what we use is we have one column called know-how and in this column we have like a link to Google Sheets with all the plans, with all the KPIs, then there's another link uh, with, uh, to Canva, for example, which we use for designing, then there's another link for uh, passwords uh, for social media account and that kind of stuff. So basically everyone who uh, has an access to a particular project uh, also has access to all those important files so this person doesn't have to go to Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever uh, but it just you know goes in Asana see all those important files in the column also the you know different know-hows um, like uh, different processes how we use different tools and that kind of stuff so you can just add it into one column super simple super easy for people to check it and it saves a lot of time 
And my favorite hack for Notion is the following. So you can create quick tips in Notion. For example, I have quick tips if I get stressed, then I have quick tips if I get sick, for example, I'm just working on this one. Then, for example, I wrote down uh, if I'm ever gonna have kids. You know, there are some quick tips, maybe not that important in this very moment, some of them maybe are. Um, and you can just go in and see what to do. For example, if I get sick, um, there are special things I can do to boost my immune system. And I always forget about those things. So they're just in Notion and I can quickly access them with basically two presses. Um, also, quick tips if I get stressed, there's a special breathing exercise that I can do. And I know that I can get stressed now and then. I'm pretty sure you have the same issue. So you can just go in, check it out. You don't have to remember it anymore. You know where it's stored, where the info is stored. So you can just go there, check it out, use it, and you're good for the day. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you learned something new. Um, have a great day. Don't forget to follow your reception on Facebook, Instagram, and I hope to see you soon again. Take care.